Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 13th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide for you a basic overview of present coal burning trends, global coal burning trends, and key trends in key, mar in, in key markets. But before I do that, I'd just like to set the context by, by saying that, that coal is one of the largest carbon emitters in the whole fossil fuel chain of carbon emissions. And reducing coal emissions is critical to reducing overall global carbon emissions. And in order to do that, ultimately, you end up having to shut down coal plants reduce coal mining and coal production, and eventually reduce the, the entire supply chain of coal burning and coal emitting infrastructure to zero. That is a serious global challenge, but it appears that the present trend for coal burning continues to be on the decline for a number of reasons, not only involving policies, climate change based policies that are reducing coal emissions from a demand standpoint, but also due to increasingly more economic forms of renewable energy such as wind and solar, as well as the advent of less expensive battery storage, which is starting to reduce the need for peaker plants in some locations. So this graph that we're looking at now is a, a graph of total world coal production through 2016. And this is provided by the Energy Information Agency. Don't currently have major confirmed updates for the more recent years. But as you can see here, coal production is, is going down. And this is driven in part by restrictive coal burning policies by China as well as the o OECD, which includes the United States and Europe. Moving in toward the present day, we find that U.S. coal is still on the decline despite Trump's numerous attempts, attempts at the federal level to uh, increase coal use. And, and these attempts so far appear to be failing in, in one indicator, we see that U.S. utilities still plan to take 11.4 gigawatts of coal-fired power plant capacity offline this year. And for another in indicator, the U.S. Energy Information Agency shows that total U.S. coal production, and this is not just for U.S. plants, but for export to other coal plants around the world, is 2.7% lower so far this year. And if you look at the past 52 weeks, coal production for the US is 4.1% lower. Moving on to China. So, so China over the past, so from, from 2013 to 2018, China's air pollution action plan resulted in the shutdown of numerous high polluting coal plants, the direct restriction of coal burning during certain periods where air pollution was, was particularly bad in China, and also shut down approximately 1,000 small coal mines, which were both very polluting and very inefficient. Looking forward, China is, is looking to to continue to reduce coal burning as part of its air pollution action plan. And these stricter requirements are, are aimed at certain specific high polluting areas and are aimed at continued reductions in coal use. Moving over to Europe, we find that the UK has radically reduced its coal use uh, through a rapid phase out, which is one of the major global success stories when it comes to 
reducing coal use such that Germany is 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 looking at, at the UK's policies related to coal and and starting to become more ambitious as well. Notably, Germans Germany's Commission on transitioning away from coal it is looking at a hard end to coal coal use. And environmentalists are presently pushing for a 2030 date. It's likely that environmentalists won't necessarily get all that they want, but it's a big story that the this German coal commission to phase out coal is looking at a hard end to coal burning for Germany. Germany represents, uh, has about a 50 gigawatts worth of, of coal burning capability. And so, though it's not quite as large as, as, as major coal burners like the U.S. or China, it, it still shows that Germany, which is a trendsetter, is also in, in a movement away from coal use. Now, in addition to all these various nations looking at either phasing out coal, reducing coal production, or, or just encouraging renewable energy production vis-a-vis -vis coal, we are starting to see some impacts from carbon price schemes in Europe. In, in recent years, carbon prices ha have been rather low, but according to this new report, from both Sandbag and The Guardian, carbon prices have recently ramped up. And this also helps to incentivize a transition away from high carbon producing coal plants to renewables or, or lower carbon producing plants. So, so this, is, this is another aspect of the trend. And overall, the, the trend for Europe is, is one of continued coal plant closures to the point that, that presently Europe is seeing a shutdown rate of around, I think, one coal plant per month. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that because uh, that information is from, from this report in, in GTM. So yeah, it looks like Europe is shutting down coal plants at approximately the rate of one coal plant per month. So, so an ongoing trend of coal plant shutdowns, which is a positive response to human-caused climate change. Unfortunately, we're going to have to get more aggressive with shutting down fossil fuel-based infrastructure and transitioning away from things like internal combustion engine-based vehicles. But the success with coal and what appears to be an ongoing success and progress with coal does lay the groundwork for an early peak in global carbon emissions if we are ambitious on other fronts. So this possibility is there. So right now we haven't seen a, a global peak in annual carbon emissions, but, but the groundwork is there. And, and if we're ambitious as, as a global civilization, we can start to achieve that and we can start to achieve net annual carbon emissions reductions from the global system, which is critical at this point if we are to prevent catastrophic human-caused climate change. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.